gun Ramos looking like he's got one more good run Sips a little shaky But his heart is still true Oh how that dog loves hunting with me and you Sporting dog adventures run boy run Everything you need is here under the sun the Sporting Dog Adventures podcast is proudly brought to you by Soggy Acres Retrievers. Remember, everyone deserves a soggy dog. Hey, welcome to the Sporting Dog Adventures podcast. Today, we're coming from our wonderful home here in southern Wisconsin. I've got my two dogs that are jumping around behind me because they're going to want attention, which is what they always do to me as we uh, start doing any live events or any podcasts. Uh, what I'm going to start doing is putting our podcast also up on YouTube. Now, the podcast has, it's grown pretty good. Now, we're on Spotify. We are on iTunes. Uh, we should be on Amazon soon. We're on Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, uh, Anchor, and, and several more. There isn't like a huge desire to grow this podcast, I guess, as in a commercial sense, like, like I had with the TV show. This is more just something fun for me to do to connect with people that love dogs and still try to help with my stated goal, which was always my goal when we had uh, the TV show, which is to get more people involved in the sport that I love. So here we go. We're going to put this up probably once a week here on YouTube, and we are trying to put out at least three episodes of our podcast a week. One of them will be our Facebook Live, and one will be on YouTube, and then the other will probably just be when I have a minute and I got a quick idea that I want to talk about. Today, we're going to talk about a question that I get often, which is, at what age should I take my puppy out hunting? Quick break. You can't see it on the podcast, but Scarlett has a moose that she wants to show everyone. She brought me a moose. Okay, Scarlett, take your moose away. So at what age would you want to take your puppy out hunting? And I had a gentleman that questioned if his five-month-old puppy was ready to hit the field. He had said that the dog was retrieving pigeons, the dog was doing doubles, the dog was under control. And I tried to be as polite as I could, but I basically questioned the level of control that he had with a five-month-old puppy. And if you do have a dog that it, you have gone through all your steps on training, you're really running the risk of breaking them and setting them back permanently so that they can't hunt or uh, be an effective dog in the field. Thought process is when you have a dog, you don't start really putting pressure on them. And I mean collar pressure with force fetch, obedience pressure until that dog is somewhere in the neighborhood of six months old or older. So the question of how old should my dog be before I take them out and hunt with them in the field really isn't necessarily about age. It is all about training. And you want to have three months of training under your dog before you take them out to the field. And now the question is, why three months? Three months is how long it takes me to train client dogs from basically a bouncing happy dog to getting them, getting them in control so that they're ready for the field. Now, it could take you longer than three months, but it takes me three months. So with how many dogs I've worked with in my life, that's what we're going to use as our timeline. And I'll explain how the timeline works now that we're looking at it. Your first six weeks of training with the dog, yes, six weeks are not even in the field. I know that comes as a shock to everyone because people want to run out and they want to take their dogs out in the field. They want to run them around and they want them to get experience so they learn how to hunt. What you need to do is tip this on, on top of its head and realize that a dog is bred to hunt if bred properly and they're bred to be biddable and trainable and take pressure if they're bred properly. Just because you have a dog that is a hunting breed does not mean that the dog will carry what you want as far as the hunting ability, I guess would be the easiest way to put it. And you're going to start with your dog at six months because they're now mature enough to take this pressure that we're going to put them under. Force fetch or trained retrieve is when you are basically 
teaching the dog that they will pick up and hold whatever item you tell them, whether it's a bumper, a bowl, or a bird, until you tell them to drop and take it from them. And drop is always to our hand. <coughs> this is something that takes an immense amount of pressure on the dog. What I do is I start with my first uh, week is on the table uh, with something called the ear pinch, and then I switch into the second week with an e-collar on my uh, on my force fetch. And it is just a process that some kennels will try to push dogs through. My personal opinion on it is that if you try a one-size-fits-all on dogs, you're going to crush a certain amount of them where they won't be recoverable and it's not fair to the dog. So I make this a six-week process, but I also add in other things that I work with on every day so that I'm not just working on only this one item. But again, as you're working with your force fetch, you're also going to start working with your e-collar conditioning. You're going to start working with your obedience and reinforcing all this so that when you do get into the field, the dog is biddable and under control. I know some trainers will do obedience and control training in the morning and then go in the field in the afternoon. My thought on that is that why would I want to set myself back on my getting the dog under control by allowing them to get away with things in the field or having to correct them on something that is going to be fun or I want to be fun so that they understand that all this training is coming down to this huge fun event called hunting. So you're going to get them through that six weeks. When you get through six, the six week process, you're going to have a dog that is completely through trained retriever force fetch. You're going to have a dog that is completely under control and any time the dog uh, does anything obedience wise that uh, is undesirable, you're going to correct them with an e-collar. And you're going to have a dog that is basically ready to go into the field so that you don't have things happen like the dog bolts in the wrong direction or the dog breaks. And if that stuff does happen, you can easily and quickly correct it. So now you're into the field and now you're going to start working with the dog in water. You're going to start working with the dog on land and you're going to start getting the dog into upland type scenarios. <clears throat> and that would be your second six weeks. Try to show the dog as much as you can so that when you get into the field, it's not all new. Everyone that has hunted with dogs has seen a dog that gets to the field in a different situation and they're either so amped up they can't stay under control or they're even weirded out by it. I've seen this with my own dogs. My gosh, my dog Ace, uh, Saggy Acres Red Baron, he is qualified all age. He has a grand pass. He's running for a second grand pass here in a couple of weeks. He's a master hunter. Um, he's got his HRCH title, obviously, if he's running for the grand. And that dog, on the first hunt I took him out, was a youth duck hunt. I threw the decoy, and he went and fetched the decoy. Again, this is an incredibly, incredibly high-end bred dog that has done wonderful in competition. He fetched a decoy. He didn't understand. He had never been hunting. So try to show them this stuff when you're getting them ready for the field. Take them out. Let them see decoys. Start with the decoys on the land, let them sniff them, throw bumpers or birds into the decoy so the dog gets to go and fetch what your item is that you want them to fetch and not the decoy. Put the decoys on water, give them all this real life experience, get them so that when you get them to the field, it is not the first time that they're seeing this stuff. The other thing that I always suggest to my clients that take dogs home is if you have a certain type of cover or water that you're hunting, Try to take them into that area. I'm not saying take them to your spot, but take them into that area. Put out your decoys or take them uh, on, a, on a walk uh, for, for Upland and let them see that so it's not the first time uh, on the hunt. And that will really help you get your dogs ahead. So again, I start training dogs when they're six months old. I tell people the age, if you're starting at six months, is nine months to take them to the field. And... If it is a dog that is a year old, it's three months of training. So age plus three months. I know people like to get them out there. We're excited. This is the shiny new object. We have our dog. They're ready to go. We think we just want to get them out there and spend time with them. 
Don't put your dog in a position where, you're gonna, where they're going to pick up bad behaviors or where they're going to, going to have something that happens that sets them back so that they can't achieve uh, being out in the field with you. Put the time in on training and then go from there and work with them so that they are definitely field ready. This portion of the podcast is proudly brought to you by Boucher Automotive in Janesville, Wisconsin. So now the next part of the podcast that we're going to talk about is obedience. And again, hunting dogs is all about obedience. When we look at training a dog for hunting, you don't actually train them to hunt. They're bred for that. We are teaching control. So you're going to want to work with the dog on healing with its knee right at your uh, right at your knee. You're going to want to have heal mean to bring the item back and sit at heel with the item in their mouth that they're retrieving. And you want to work on your recall. You are going to have this dog so that they sit and sit means sit and they don't move. They're bringing items back. They're recalling on the first call. And if they don't, we're going to reinforce our obedience training with the e-collar. You want to make sure that these dogs are set and ready to go so that they are under control because the last thing you want is a dog that ruins your hunt, breaks when there's birds on the water, or even worse, runs in front of a gun and you're dealing with something that is a tragedy that no one would ever want to be part of but happens every year in the hunting community. So get your dog under control, work with your obedience. Even if you have an older dog, work with them on obedience every year before you hit the field with them so that you are keeping them freshened up on this so that they're ready for that year's hunt. Hope that helps. That was our obedience tip. Now for more after this. This part of the podcast is brought to you proudly by Mech Outdoors. And the last part that we're going to talk about would be hunting and training. And this is dogs breaking. I make no secret about it. When I was filming my TV show, we would be on the road from usually September, uh, sometimes even August, uh, all the way through February. And it was very hard for me uh, having kids, having a wife, then I'm coming home to after traveling so much and then traveling so much to keep the dogs where they didn't get loose throughout the season and have times when they would break. Now I have more time and I'll be darned if I'm going to let my dogs do that now. Uh, Even with my dogs that I have, I've got Ace who's got his master title, finish title, he's qualified all age, and Tank was his finish title. Both of those dogs this year during teal season uh, did decide that they were going to challenge me and break. And instead of me worrying about shooting the birds or the camera guy or the microphone, I'm all about the dog. I am a team with the dog. I'm a handler first. And I... What I do is I have the collar where I have continuous stimulation. When the dog did break, I held the button down and said, here, here, here. When the dog turned and came back toward me, I released the collar, brought them all the way in, had them sit, and made them sit for at least a minute or so because there's no, I'm not in a hurry when I'm out there if something like this happens, and then release the dog so that they, uh, they can go out and do the retrieve. Both dogs uh, were corrected uh, once. Uh, Ace was actually corrected a second time. Um, And it is stuff that if you let them break on the shot, if the shots aren't done, you're putting your dog in danger. And if you let them break on the shot, they'll move to where they're going to break with birds on the water. Uh, And that happens when you've got, uh, during teal season, we had three land in. We had a bunch more that were circling around and we made the decision. We're like, all right, we'll let those three sit there. And when these other ones set in, then we're going to take them and we'll have the other birds coming up off the water at the same time. Ace decided he could not contain himself. He was so excited. He broke. So we had to correct him and we didn't get a bird. So this is something with breaking that if you don't correct it and you don't work with it throughout the year, you're going to end up where it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that's going to get worse. During the off-season, I work with the dogs on breaking. I put them actually in a uh, dog line. I will throw bumpers or I'll throw birds. I'll shoot a 209 primer pistol. Sometimes with uh, more advanced dogs, I'll throw three bumpers out and get them so that they're really excited. Then I release them. I still make them come all the way back in. 
heal into the dog blind, release them on the next one, heal into the dog blind, release them on the last one. They're very good marking dogs when they're advanced dogs, so you can get away with this. A younger dog, you're going to want to line them up at heel and send them. The other thing I'll do with dogs is I will take them in the yard, and anyone can do this in your yard. And I'll just have a bumper or a frozen bird, and I'll throw that item where it is only like 10 feet from us. So it is so tempting for the dog. And I will let them basically sit there and then release them and let them pick the item up. And I'll do this numerous times. You want to add degree of difficulty. You have two dogs where someone else is running the other dog and let another dog re retrieve something that's 10 feet away. And you are now working with the dog so that they completely understand that they need to be under control. That is the end of today's podcast. I do want to thank everyone that is watching our podcast Again, Sporting Dog Adventures podcast is on a bunch of different platforms. I'm going to try to put at least one a week here up on YouTube. I do appreciate your time today. Have a great weekend, and God bless. Sporting Dog Adventures, run, boy, run. Everything you need is here under the sun.